Hey, what's up, addicts? Thanks so much for tuning into this video. We thought, man, we banged some walleye. Let's do a quick tutorial and show you guys how to fillet and clean these walleye. But before we do, thank you so much to Fillet Away Fish Mats for sponsoring this video. These mats are badass. All the guys in the Northwest are pretty much using them now. Yep. Link in the description down below. We actually have a special discount code from Addicts that you guys can use to get 20% off your order at Fillet Away. So go get these mats and Pop Off will show you why they're so badass as he fillets this this walleye, but you have a couple different ways to do it. So we're gonna go through two different ways of how to do it. And everyone, if you guys haven't met Nick, this is Nick Popoff from Peel the Real Guide Service. We went out fishing with him today and caught a bunch of walleye and had a good time, filmed a bunch of tutorials, which you guys will see soon. Yes. Yeah, Most of the addicts know who you are. A few of you. <laughs> well, hello. So I didn't even realize there's two different ways to yeah, do this. Yeah. So let's talk about it. So there's two different ways. What, the, any fish that is like this, it's like a sea bass, any of those fish that, bottom fish they typically have a big rib cage you know so there's there's two different ways either way you're not going to get belly meat off of them typically you know and if you do it's a very small amount so some guys that especially when you got a bunch 20 or 30 of them you know there's there's a quick way to do it and then there's a little more detailed way to do it and i'm going to start this guy off i'll kind of show you the way that if you got time and only one or two fish and you really want to take your time and do it i'll show you the way to, to do it without the rib cage on on the fillet so it'll take all the bones out except for the row of pin bones, which I'll show at the end. And then I'll show you how to remove the pin bones too, which is kind of- So cool which way is like the quick and dirty way and which way is the first way is gonna be like first the quick way and dirty. The clean way. That's kind of like- The clean way, yeah, okay. So this takes a little bit like... more time, but it's, it, it, it'll take you a little, it's a little more time consuming, but it, the filet typically comes out, there'll be no bones in it. So it's cool. just a little boneless method basically. So first thing you want to do is, I like the filet with fish mats here because you, the, basically these little prongs, if you just apply a little pressure to the fish, which I just go inside the gill, um, it'll kind of hold your fish in place. They, they're real sturdy. So what you do is you just cut in behind this little peck fin right here, and you just make your same cut. Take your Gerber knife and just run it right along that peck fin and down to the belly. And then you cut all the way to the back of the head here, and if you just rotate your knife like this, and then you just kind of slide it right up along the fin here, you know, eighth of an inch or half half an inch down in it. And then you go to about that fin there. And then you're gonna take the point of your blade here and you're gonna feel for the backbone. And once you feel the backbone, you'll poke through by the anal fin and just keep downward pressure to the tail. Like that. And you wanna leave that tail piece connected. It's really important. And then you'll come back here, go back to your original fillet and just run your knife right up and down the, the fillet here. And I see, so the tail meat's kind of holding yep. holding it down there. And as you can see, as pop off, as you put pressure on the fillet away fish mat, yep. that's what makes these things great. You just have to apply just a little bit of pressure and it holds that fish on there just solid, and doesn't slide around at all. So this is the only kind of tricky part to filleting them like this, is you're really tracing that backbone. And, and it's really important to kind of peel the fillet as you do it, because these are all rib cage bones right in here. And this is kind of where you would lose your belly meat anyways. So, you're just trying to stay right above that, nice and steady, right above that belly meat there. And just kind of keep flaying down. And then once you're down here, I just cut like so. Uh -oh. oh, slimy. And then you got your filet. So this right oh, here. Oh, look how the, tasty that meat yeah. is. See how beautiful that meat is? I mean, that's a nice white meat as you're gonna get. I'm gonna get stung by a yellow jacket. But in here where this thin meat is, typically you're gonna cut this section out anyways because that's all bones, you know? I mean, yes, there is a little bit of belly meat on it that, you know, when you do it this way, you take a little bit out of the belly, but it's not typically meat that's gonna be on there. And then you leave that piece connected to the tail so you can then skin it. So you just run your knife down in and then grab a hold of the tail firmly. Keep your knife nice and flat. Just pull along the bone, and there you go. It's a perfect Ooh. piece of walleye meat. Sean, you're gonna be in for a treat later. Ooh. I mean, you can see there's just no meat left on the fish, you know. And this is, even though it looks like you lost belly meat, there's nothing there. I mean, it's air thin, basically. <clears throat> and this is a cool little trick. Phil, Phil showed me this trick, Phil Wildman, and you just kind of split the the tail here, and this is. How, there's these little pin bones that run right here on a on a walleye. So you just go right in the halfway, you'll see where the fillet's kind of split there. And you just go like that. 
and then you take your hands and just pull on each side and it just literally splits it right down the middle. So then you feel which side, sometimes it'll stay on this piece and sometimes it'll stay on the other piece, but those little bones are right along this piece here. So then you can just take your knife and literally cut that tiny little strip out and now you're 100% boneless. Get that last little bone there. There you go. So, so you lose zero meat and you're 100% boneless. Cut this up, taco time. Look how beautiful that meat is. I mean, just absolutely perfect. Maybe do one more quick rip flipper over and show, yeah, it, show yep. it again. So we'll do that one more time. If you guys missed anything there, we'll show you again really quick how. So same thing, you're gonna make that same incision right behind the gill plate down to the belly. And then same thing, you're just doing it from opposite direction. So you go right down the, the oops, Gerber knife's so sharp it won't stay in. Just cuts right through that bad boy. And then right along the backbone to this back fin here. And then you're gonna feel for your backbone. Once you find the backbone, there it is. Oh, maybe, there it is. And then this is the important part is when you poke through, maybe, you just wanna stay downward pressure onto the bone. So you make sure you, re you remove all that bone. And then once again, you're just tracing the backbone. Just follow that backbone down. Keep tracing. And basically, it's just gonna show you exactly where to cut by following the rib cage, following the backbone. Then I just detach it right here and you're good to go. See that one left a little belly meat on there, but that stuff's all gonna get removed anyway, so I don't use that. I typically cut that out either way. They say that on any fish, typically the belly meat, but there you go. There's your little walleye filet. So save that. And we'll do our little... You ever tried using it for crab or anything? Walleye carcass? No, you know, I, I haven't, but I guarantee it would work. It's yeah. just like any bottom fish, you know? It's the same. Yeah, that little splitting down the middle trick, that's... Yeah. yeah, shout out to Phil Wildman, Wildman Outdoors for showing yeah, me that. Yeah, it's that's pretty a cool. cool. Trick. I call him Mr. Walleye. <laughs> he loves these little critters. So you're just removing that, and then I just feel the side of the fillet, and there's absolutely no bones, you know. And then I just double back. This one, it's just such a thin layer. Those pin bones are so tiny that. And then, I mean, that's a nice, dude, that's a healthy meal off of one fish. I mean, that's a lot of play, you know. Well, cool, that that way to me wasn't, yeah, it took a little bit longer, but yeah. it was still quick. It's simple. But this way, I have a feeling I know what you're gonna do here, and this way is much faster, right? It is much faster, and it's a little. So do you ever use, you, how many times, how many wall are you doing in a row before you're sharpening your Gerber knife? I usually do, I, I usually sharpen it when I'm done every day, but the first couple times I don't sharpen it because it's so damn sharp that you gotta be really careful. When you first bring these things out of the package, they are literally so fat and sharp that I wait a few times before I start to sharpen it. Let it get a little dull and then I start to sharpen it back up. But usually 10, 15 walleye and then I, I hit cool. the blade. I mean, it stays, you know, these things don't have a big heavy bone. If you're cleaning like a bottom fish or something, you know, I'd probably do it every few fish just to keep a good edge on my blade. but. These things are incredible. So this way is kind of the same way. You can either slit them up the belly or not. Doesn't really matter, but I like to do that. And then all you're gonna do is you're just gonna come in the backbone. I mean, same cut as the other cut, just like so. And you're just gonna turn your blade and stay right on the backbone and do the same exact thing. Remember leaving that attached. And then you're gonna come in here. That same exact way. And then this is the part that's the differentiator between the two. So you have now that 
by doing it this, the kind of fast way, you have this rib cage still on here. And most guys is what they're gonna do is they're just gonna make an incision and cut away the rib cage totally. Like they just remove it from the fish. So you have no bones in there, but I keep cutting through the bone instead of cutting away. And just kind of cut at an angle so you don't lose the belly meat. But you basically get the same thing. You lose that little bit of belly meat and you know, but same type deal. And that one I actually removed most of the pin bones on on that one when I when you took out the rib cage. Yeah, you, you can kind of cut them all out there. And I can see, you know, like I've, well, I've watched TJ do like, you know, and he's playing like 30 wall at a time. I've watched him, he's doing it this way, or he's sometimes using an electric just to make it go quick, just to zzz, zzz, zzz. If you have a lot, those electric knives are incredible. I mean, they're, you know, you're here, you're, you're really. If you have down. a ton and ton if, of fish. If you have a lot of fish, to yeah. do five, six walleye, it's not seven, 10 walleye, and it ain't worth it, you know, but. That's what makes these Gerber knives so awesome, is just having yeah. that sharpener at your disposal. It's the best thing right. I've, I've ever used. I mean, it's the best feature on a knife, especially salmon fishing when you want a sharp knife and you want to be getting there and make a good cut and a nice pretty filet for your people or whoever's taking home the fish. I mean, it's so awesome. So same thing on this side, you're cutting down the gill plate. You just rotate your knife right along the backbone. Hold that in place, leave it on the tail section, boom. Look at that filet. I mean, that is some pretty stuff, man. Same deal here. And I use the fish's tail when I'm when I, I apply pressure downward at an angle and use the fish's tail to pull. I use that to pull the filet off, basically. And some people, I mean, they really take the time to go underneath the. You can really kind of try to save as much of the belly meat as you can. I I usually don't mess with it, but. I was told that if there is toxins in a fish, they're typically stored down in the belly. In the belly fat. Yep. yep. And so usually on a fish like this, I will just cut that that uh, center section out like so. And there you have it. And so this one still has the pin bones in it, so I'll just make that little incision, pull the two fillets apart. If my hands weren't so slippery. There we go. And then feel which side the pin bones are on, which they're on this side right here. And then you just cut that tiny little strip out. And there you have it, you're boneless. No money. So two different methods, same result basically. You know, it's, it's up to you, do whatever you're comfortable with, you know. The worst thing you wanna do is catch a bunch of fish, get them home, and then hack them up. Yeah, you know? and mess them up. Because have, you gotta really know how to do it too, especially because they're not big, you yeah, know, yeah. there's a nice, there's a good amount of meat there, yeah. but if you mess it up, you could really lose yeah. all the meat. And, and that's the thing, like, you know, especially down the coast when we're salmon fishing, you know, you guys spend so much money to get out there and so much time and effort and towing your boat and fuel and gas and bait and all that stuff. And you get down there and you catch a great fish and you don't bleed it and you, you don't, you know, you don't do a great job playing it. And, all your efforts wasted you know you want some great quality meat and it's super fun to do so one quick little thing before we leave i wanted to show people oh, yeah, is grab this. your hose this is why this is the other reason that these fillet away fish mats are amazing is to clean to clean these things it just this is the heart these mats that stuff is embedded in it i mean if you look that stuff is literally embedded in the and you'll see i mean it's it's incredible Another thing you could do is just take it, slap it in the water a few times, shake it off, and I mean, look how clean that thing comes out. It's, those are, I love those things, man. They're, mm. they're just absolutely a game changer. Super awesome company, local guys here in the Northwest. Thank you again for them to sponsor this video. Again, there's a discount code right down below, link to their website. Go get yourself a couple filet away mats, support one of our partners. We appreciate them working with us. And again, pop off. You got any walleye trips going or what do you got? Yeah, I do. I got walleye trips through the end of July. So if you want to get out with me, just give me a call. I'll be fishing walleye probably up to the last week of July. And then and you're going uh, to Salmon Town. Yeah, then it's Salmon Time. You got any open for salmon? I do. I have a few days left. I, I just had a group cancel and I got a couple days in September and then I got early August open. So Chinook, Silvers, Ocean Silvers, there's going to be, you know, we're supposed to have 1.2 million Silvers this year. Ooh. So talk about crazy fishing, man. Yeah. I can't wait. If you guys are out of the Northwest, 
this is the year to come to the Northwest and fish for some salmon. If you have salmon on your bucket list or something you've wanted to do, we can get you out with any of our addicted guides. We'll put Nick's link down here in the description below, but feel free to shoot us a message or comment below. And as always, don't forget to tap that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications, and we'll see you on the river. See you on the river, guys. Thanks for tuning in.